And it's from the first book, the introduction of Old Percy, um, the tall ship sailor from the 1920s and 30s. And he, um, uh, being a man of the times, um, brought his family up rather strictly. So now he's having to mend bridges. But this little part here is about him being um, when he was 13 and he's returning home after his first long voyage of eight months. And he's approaching his, his home and he's telling his son about this. I was thinking how the handsome, handsomeness of the house on the outside didn't let on what was happening on the inside. Yeah, that's the thought was in my head. He sucked on his pipe, stoking the embers into fiery crimson. Anyways, my stride slowed to a walk about then, and I'm coming near the house, and I got this tightness in my belly. I stopped a moment, and I remember I was staring down at the layer of leaves underfoot. Ah, the colors, fiery orange, pure gold, and blood red were those maples with rounded veins spreading out like a fan on each leaf. Then I lifted my head and peered at the windows to see if I catch a glimpse, some sign of her. But not a curtain was disturbed, and not a soul in the backyard either, or even along the wooden walkways leading to the outbuildings. Percy's voice lowered then an octave. I could smell the smoke from our chimney, gray waves of it lowering down on me. Further up the street, a gaggle of children talking and laughing when they as they climbed the trail to school. His words petered out and came to a stop. At once Joe felt himself in Percy's shoes. He sensed the trepidation, the fear of a shadowy menace, of lurking danger. The feeling of standing on a precipice waiting for a launch into freefall, into something bad. He waited. He was getting acquainted with this reticent quiet of his old man. It always presented before the unwrapping. It wasn't long before the subdued voice returned. Now I had to think about facing Mama. Percy slowly enunciated, and the minute I thought that, the tightness gripped me again. It was like a hard fist in my stomach. I told myself that she might have changed. Maybe she even missed me, being I was away so long. Anyways, I quickly gave over my thoughts to Papa, but that knot, that knot in my belly didn't go away. Joe bent forward to brace his elbows on his knees. What do you mean? Well, you're too young to know your grandmother, my mother Dee Dee, and how feral she was from Nova Scotia. His words stumbled, came out as if on stilts. All at, all at once he thought, all at once the thoughts scared seared through Joe's mind. So there's a reason we never heard anything about her. Creeps, not even mom, Cripes, not even mom sp spoke of her mother-in-law. And no pictures or photos either of Grandma Kilkenny. His memory search did a roll back and he racked his mind for any bits, any mementos, but he came up empty. Percy set down his pipe and withdrew his handkerchief, fumbling it. He gripped and released the fabric with an abrupt vigor, as though to rid it of some distasteful slag. Joe inclined his chair, his curiosity now immensely aroused. Whatever it was about her ain't savory, he thought, aware that he must temper his enthusiasm so as not to appear overly anxious to know, he turned to gaze outside. Puffy clouds had moved in, pure white bulges strung across a crystal blue sky. Joe turned back to the room as the Percy kept going. Anyways, coming into the yard, I see our maple trees. They're all a glory, red and yellow, and there too are the last white chrysanthemums in the garden. They're still standing, braving the fall's cold, and the white picket fence was all a shine in the sun. His old, man's being <clears throat> his old man being gripped in the reliving of this distasteful event was made obvious by the transfer of stress to the piece of cloth in his hand. For a brief moment, thumb and finger twisted a tight spiral at the corner of the handkerchief. I came in the back, he resumed, Twas my habit. Mama didn't like none of us using the front door, said it's for the priest and other important people. So I pushed my way quietly through the kitchen one. Boys, I was trembling like I was going to enter the maw of a big sea creature. 
Yes, I recall that moment, but lo and behold, what struck me, what greeted me right off the bat was the smell of fresh baked bread. Nothing like that warm smell in the kitchen, eh? Makes you feel your home. He smiled, but the smile evaporated as he added, ah, it was not but deceiving. Thank you.